Wednesday night, 6 o'clock Eastern. Need I say more? Well, the show does have a name, Florida State Seminoles Live. But again, you have come to know that you got to be here every Wednesday at 6. Lock it in. Be here every week for the discussion that we bring you on Florida State football with, from the top, Jason Parker, NBC6, Logan Robinson, Noel Game Day. And it because we need him, we desperately need him through June, Nate Greer, Noel Game Day. Appreciate you boys jumping on. How's it going tonight? I feel like I'm being bombarded by the Null Game Day crew. Like, do you feel like it's this Null Game Day versus us? I mean, what's what's going on here, guys? It's starting We're to taking spread. over, man. Taking <laughs> over. Really, I feel like this, is, this is like the Road Dog Jesse James, the Badass Billy Gunn, the New Age Outlaws. Right? This is what we've got going on in the Null Game Day crew. Hey, with all the that content one. and the conversation they're pumping out, they could take over my Florida State channel and probably run oh. that on the side. No. 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Mark, Mark, you put out – Twice, if not triple the amount of content we do, definitely on YouTube. So we're trying to catch up with you. So this is why we're getting a little reinforcements here. And plus, recruiting wise, as Nate knows, I usually direct it to either him or Dustin whenever we're doing our segments on here. The Spear. Mm -hmm. So he's. I've been. I've been trying to get someone on here to kind of give me better info on recruiting. So Nate is here to save the day. Nate, I do have a quick question for you. How many times does Logan say the word Discord on here? The Spear, well, like over under, because he says that word all the time here. With Mark Rogers to be the college football, it's uh, I, I would say fifteen, but I think <laughs> together we probably go. We probably hit thirty. Thirty, got yeah, it. We say we, we say we say it a lot on the podcast. So there we go. You got It's not just you got to pump your own product. You know, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cash flow with everything around you. Come on now. All yeah. right, time to let everyone know out there that uh, you ultimately produce the show. Leave your comments, your questions, your debate topics for Jason, Nate, uh, Logan, and myself. And of course, please like the video before you get settled, really dive into the conversation, hit the like button, share this video out on social media. We've had uh, really good responses the last couple of weeks. We topped out around 140 the last couple of weeks. We can do better than that. So continue to bring people on in here as we roll toward August. All right, Nate, we're going to put you to work here. Here we go. First couple of weekends are in the books there in June. Uh, your initial thoughts about, and we talked about this between uh, Jason Logan and myself. Rarely do you hear a recruit come out and say he had a bad experience. You know, it's usually very positive feedback, but how do you feel? What really struck you about the visits that have taken place already? Uh, for me, in my, in my opinion, is the uh, overwhelming ability to connect with the recruits. Uh, one of the things that we talked about quite a few times on our podcast, is that Coach Norvell and his staff is known for the ability to present. Once you get these kids on campus, they're able to kind of do a really good job of selling Florida State. Both, um, you know, let's call it what it is, their youth uh, helps them a ton. Um, their ability uh, to still be somewhat new to the 18-year-old, you know, it's just what it is. So – they're able to connect, and I've talked to, you know, eight kids for interviews and text messages and direct messages, and, and, and the constant thing they first say is, like, I have not connected with a coach, coaching staff, as well as I have with Coach Norvell and Coach Blank, whether it's Coach Atkins, their positional coach, or Coach JP, or, you know, catching up with Odell, so – First and foremost is the ability for them to welcome these kids and show them how happy they are for them to, to finally see them in person and and show that that's that the connect connections are true because they've been able to line up repeated visits and also official visits with every single recruit that's visited so far. So you know, these kids are coming back in droves. You look at a kid like Brian Grant, who's committed to, to Tennessee. Um, you know, he's an in-state lineman. He's been twice in less than a week. Um, so they're getting these kids on campus. They're showing them what they had to offer. Um, they're, they're pitching uh, the comeback, so to speak. And, and these kids are buying in, and it helps that you have the high-hanging fruit like a Travis Hunter who have bought in and, and are helping you sell the program. So – you know, for me, that's the biggest thing so far, two weeks in, 
is they've gotten big time kids on campus, multiple five stars, multiple blue chip kids, while also getting kids that they like a ton that they are evaluating like a like a Horace Lockett, who is super low on the national scene, but the coaching staff has been on for a long time. So this kid's coming now for another camp and coming at the end of the month for, for an official visit. So it doesn't matter if you're a big time national recruit or a kid that they see fitting their system. Uh, they're doing a great job of getting bodies in there. And, and like you said, Mark, you know, these kids are going to be very polite. They're going to say the visit was cool, but you can tell when you talk to them, whether they like it or not, they're going to be very generic and very basic, but these kids are going in depth. I like this. I like that. I saw this. I saw that. So the excitement is. is uh oh, might have froze there. Might have got stuck. Damn, we had good questions. Huh? Uh, it's a, it's the dial up. You still what? You still with us there, Nate? Who me? Yeah, you still. Oh, you're back. You're back. You're back. We got you back. We got you back, Nate. I'm Nate, with. I'm with you. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got yeah, you. Yeah, Nate, quick, um, yeah. you mentioned a couple of the names. We've talked about a couple of the guys, Armella, Julian Armella, who's from down here in South Florida, how he you know, took a tour, visited up there. Who are some of the names of guys that Florida State may have not been in the competition for before that Florida State may be doing very well with? Who are some of the guys that you've seen over the last two weeks that, that fall into that boat? I, I think getting Julian Armella was absolutely massive because Florida State has fallen off a little bit with that recruitment. Uh, you know, schools like LSU, Ohio State, Alabama had definitely crept up. You know, I would not say way, way ahead, but ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. And so getting him right at 1201 on that campus was very big for FSU. Uh, you know, he's a legacy. We all know that, but he's an important recruit in terms of position, legacy. A lot of things go into that. But you look at, at at Julian, who loved his visit. It's his first time being there and seeing those coaches and staff in person. And, and they hit a home run. You know, I, I would call it a grand slam to the fact that there are some people now that are back to thinking that Florida State's going to be the odds on favorite, which I'm not there yet. You know, Florida State's got it on the field to land a kid, Julian Armella. Um, that's kind of been the, the baseline with his recruitment. Uh, but getting him on campus was massive. And then a kid that no one talks about really is Demon, uh, the kid from Orlando. He's a linebacker. Uh, he's probably the Lions best in Florida. Uh, he was not included for the state in his top list, and then he comes in, takes a, a visit, and, and here we are. So uh, they've done a great job with him. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot of kids. You know, I, I mentioned Brian Grant, the Tennessee commitment. Visiting twice in a week, so they're doing a they're doing a phenomenal job with with, with these kids. Um, you know, they've had probably well over a hundred just official visitors and, and official visitors, and you throw in the camps, it, it's a massive amount of campus. So you know, I, I think Armelli is Armelli is way ahead of that 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 list of the most important, most impact that they've had so far. Nate, we talked about Armella. And, and, I'm glad and, you brought and, that up because that was huge to have him on campus. Yeah. It was a kind of a surprise too. Absolutely. I, I don't think anyone expected him. Um, you know, he had kind of gone silent a little bit in terms of, of what he was doing. And he pops up, you know, word popped up that he was coming. And, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, I'm a believer in follow the visits. I'm a believer in and watch where they go and what they do, not necessarily what they say. So that really shows that Florida State really is truly there. And, and they just got to do what they got to do on the field. You know, the playing time is there. The, the connection with Atkins has been there. Um, the family ties are there. Pops wants them at Florida State. But he's not going to go to FSU if they go six and six or five and seven and they struggle on the field again. He's just not going to go there. So, Nate, 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 down here, obviously, I'm down here in South Florida, Ron Law, the Miami fans. There's a lot of talk about Miami yep. and Morgan Jones Jr. A lot of Miami fans think that they can get a chance to steal the son of arguably one of the greatest linebackers in Florida State history. 
What are what are you hearing so far? I, I, I talked to him at the state championship game. He seemed like somebody who, who I would say Florida State has a slight lean right now, but what are you hearing as far as the recruitment of, I think, arguably the most important recruit for Florida State in this process? Um, I definitely agree he's the most important recruit on the board. Uh, I, I, I think he's the most important recruit on the board coming into the cycle uh, for a few reasons, you know, the legacy-wise. Um, you know, Marvin Jones is the best linebacker in the history of college football, and we'll, we can in time. But he's also a really dang good football player at a position of need at, at, at defensive end. So he's going to end up one of the top 50 players in the country. He's going to be a borderline five-star. He might reach that five-star status. Um, getting him coming in, uh, I have it on my notes here, number one in big letters was um, Jones Jr. visiting this weekend. Uh, getting him on campus is big. I know Miami thinks that, you know, they have a shot. Um, personally, and based off, you know, I've talked to his dad a few times. I've talked to Marvin a few times. A lot of people that, that I talk to down in your area also, too, kind of tie him to, I don't know if you guys remember Christian Jones mm -hmm. and his recruitment. Um, it, it, it was kind of, Christian was very open to the process, just like I think Marvin Jones is very open to the process. But the, the desire and the family history in, in Florida State just stuck with him. Uh, Tennessee was very close to getting him um, back then. But I, I, I compare those recruitments very similar. The, the very, I, I think Marvin ends up at Florida State, which is Alabama, not Miami, not Florida. I think it comes down to an Alabama-Florida State decision. I think that, you know, ultimately, I do agree with you. I think that the fan in him ends up with Florida State. I think that, you know, again, he's in that same boat as Armella. He needs to see some production, needs to see some uh, some some progress with the on-field. But I do think that Florida State has had a lead and, and, and will will be the, the quasi-leader. And I say quasi, I just think that, it's going to take a lot for someone just to knock off that history because he's been so many times. So uh, I, I, I do think that Florida State, but I do think Alabama is going to be a major, major issue. Mm -hmm. There's a guy right now that Florida State uh, might be in some big favor here of landing, and that's Omar Graham Jr. out of Fort La Lauderdale down in that Miami region. But there's uh, he plans on making his commitment on Sunday, Nate. Uh, and, you know, he just recently visited Florida State and really enjoyed it. And, you know, his dad, he said, has been a Miami fan. And once uh, the family got to go visit, uh, it seems like, mm. you know, it was set then that he wants to make a decision, which is always a really good sign. If you see a recruit going to visit your school and, you know, he kind of wants to make the announcement a little bit after that, there's usually a good sign of something happening, leaning towards your way. But it seems like Omar Graham might be a knoll on Sunday at 6 p.m. Yeah, and he canceled his other visits. So let's just really read the tea leaves. And again, what he's doing, or he's in, who he visits, who he does not visit. And, and Omar Graham is someone that you know we stayed in contact a lot with on on No Game Day. Um, you know, both Dustin and I. Um, Dustin's done a lot more talking with him. I've done more like the behind the scenes. And, and with him, it's always been: Are they going to offer? And, and if they offer, you know, Florida State becomes a, 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 a – I think that they've just done a great job recruiting him overall. Um, I, I, they offered him, and, and that's a done deal. Um, you know, I, I compare him to Reggie Northup. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's a, definitely a middle linebacker. He, he's a guy who, you know, he's a thumper, um, does a great job, you know, in, in, in the run part of that defense. I think he's maybe a little bit better in the passing part. You know, I think he moves a little bit better than Reggie did. Uh, but very, very would be a very good get, very good take for 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 Florida State when they're really looking trying to fill that. Who's going to be the next guy in the middle? You know, mm -hmm. There were more defense kind of sub pack type. Um, you know, he's he's going to. I think they saw him work out and they saw his fluidity 
And I think they, I think that was the biggest concern is, is, is he a one dimensional linebacker or is he able to, you know, play in space and, and cover if you're going to go to a four, two, five. So I, I think he showed them what they needed to see in person. And, and I, I think it's a probably a 125% chance that he can miss the Florida state. Mm-hmm. I like the comparison to uh, Reggie Northrup because he does have that kind of build six, one, 205, going to get it a little bit bigger, too, once he arrives. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and going to trim off a little bit of fat, too. But he he does have that kind of comparison. Most importantly, he's from Broward County. Yeah. We have mm-hmm. greatness that comes from Broward County. Yep. I mean, Jason Parker is one of them. Yeah. 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 If I'm on drugs. Yeah. yeah you, you know, stop, stop doing drugs. You, you, <laughs> you, you, you can never not enough South Florida players. Thank you. Know. you. Tell Logan this. There's that long, there's that. There, the, there's that long-term debate, um, you know, not, not to get sidetracked real quick, but, you know, back in the no, no digest days when I was working with McKinley, him and I had a debate on who plays the best football, you know, him being, you know, Myron's brother and being from, you know, the, the Northeast. And I'm like, you put a, you put a, a team together uh, of recruits, doesn't matter what star ranking of, uh, of four or five star guys up from that area. I'll put together two and three star kids in Miami, mm-hmm. and I bet you they're going to be guys that did better in college. And, and I would take that over any four and five star kid from New Jersey any day. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, one thing I wanted to say too, when you talk about, <laughs> okay. you know, you're, you're talking I'm going to let like, that uh, go, but you guys keep going. Yeah, go ahead. No, we, no, we, no, we can no, debate no. some other day. Uh, yeah, well, we'll, we'll get into that some other the time. Best, I understand the Florida pride is <laughs> strong. It's strong. The best, the best three county talent uh, for high school football in the country is Miami Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach County. The rest of the country is good. Ohio yeah. is very good. Ohio I'm not, is very good I'm not debating that it's the best recruiting yeah, exactly. state in the country. Uh, it's arguable, though, with Texas. But I'm not saying that it's not one of the top two, but I don't know how you can say that a two or three star is equivalent to a four or five star. That would mean that if we were taking four and five stars from Georgia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, wherever, that they couldn't play. No. Well, they can play. It, the, dif- the difference is the I, fact that – I, 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 I bring it down for you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I bring it down for you. This is why. Usually a two and three star kid from Miami is not a lack of talent. It's a lack of the ability to, for, to go get exposure because they mm-hmm. come from a low income area that they don't have a way to get to camps. They don't have a way to get noticed. So they go under the radar and, and, and these recruiting sites just throw a label, throw a star ranking on it and, and, and move on. And so you look at these kids that can't get to these, uh, the recognition and college and they just dominate uh, that mentality is, this is my this is to get out of this area to get out of opalaka to get out of the get out of the crap and they have that dog mentality is what makes them better that dog mentality separates any kid from you know ohio michigan that that's just how i feel okay, and, and, and there's so many talented teams it's such a large area and and, and, and then you have so much talent that just plays from the time they're six to the time they're 18. That's all they do. So it, it, it's, it's just a, a re, you know, growing up in Florida, all I did was play football as a kid. And, and it makes you a better player. And, and a, a, a lot of politics goes into these rankings. And, and I, I feel that, you know, it's a lack of exposure that results in a lot of these kids that are being underrated. Right. And, Nate, Nate, first of all, let, let's let's not. And Florida's say, just the best. Let's not say Opelok is crap. Opelok is a beautiful area. Let's. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna defend Miami Dade County on that part right there. But just yeah. to make a point, you, 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 are, you are 100 correct on this point. And Mark, I'll say it like this: Miami Central, where where Dalvin Cook went, where Devonte Freeman went, they're playing schools like Booker T. Washington that's sending kids not just to Florida State, but to Florida, to Alabama, to Miami, to all these other schools. The the level of competition down here you are seeing competition that's essentially college-level games on a weekly basis. IMG. Kind of not in the same area, but IMG. But it's still it's still in the same area. Yeah. I, you know, it's over on the southwest side of the state. But, yes, down here you have St. Thomas Aquinas played Cardinal Gibbons last season. They play Heritage nearly on a yearly basis. All three of those schools won state championships this year. 
That, that's that's not the part of the conversation I took exception with. So I, I agree and I understand all of that that was just stated. I'm not going to we're not, we're not going to go down the road that I could take this because this is not worth it because we want to talk Florida State. Yeah, the perfect example is that Miami Northwestern team to Corey Harris and all them who who was the best out of that whole group? Levante David. A guy no one ever heard of goes to Nebraska and goes to the NFL and just dominates. So th th that's just how it is down there. But moving on to Florida State. <laughs> but I, I, I wanted to also say, you know, you, you talk about, uh, you know, the, 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 the things that Florida State's done with these visits um, that, you know, we talked about earlier. Sam McCall has now started to cancel his visit. So yeah. he's been there a few times. He's one of, the, one of the bell cows. Now, a guy that some people thought, you know, maybe Florida State doesn't hold on to, now has canceled a visit to South Carolina, canceled a visit to LSU. Yeah, he went to UCF. It's still home school. I'm not worried about that. But so you see that kind of stuff, too. A guy that is now more locked in than a lot of fans of rival teams maybe thought was going to happen. Mm -hmm. well, well, yeah. Ronan, thank you for your 1378. I think right now, actually, the answer to that is Nate's Wi-Fi. I think Nate's <laughs> Wi-Fi is right now in a worse shape than we were at 3-6 and six last season. I think if no game day, <laughs> get no game day some money, we can get Nate some better Wi-Fi. We, we, can, we can fuel it down there. We can we can work on that, too. I just fueled uh, Dustin with the new mic, but he's still already complaining about how to set it up and everything. But uh, just going back, though, to Nate and his no, – I was going to bring him up to Sam my Wi-Fi. It's so bad that he, he yep. it's the timing on talking is like by 20 seconds. And he's not even drunk like <laughs> you, man. Come on. Uh, 75 <laughs> likes and I shotgun a beer. 75 go. likes. We're at 40. We're at 40. But yeah, Sam McCall shutting, shutting everything kind of down right now is a huge thing because whenever he first uh, committed, you know, everybody was like, oh, man, that's great. You're getting both Travis Hunter and you get Sam McCall, two five star products, put him in the back and the defensive backfield. But you're still worried about Alabama, even Florida there that he just decommitted from. And then out of nowhere, after not really out of nowhere, but he goes and spends time with Travis Hunter that whole week. He's at Midnight Madness. They're sitting, setting up shop recruiting wise. I think that's pretty much what sealed it. That's what Travis Hunter's been really good at. That's why Norvell wants to pay for his hotel or whatever is going on. He's going to have Travis Hunter stay as long as he can and help recruit. But Sam McCall, seeing him seal that down, I think is is big time. I mean, it, it shouldn't be something to kind of look over. Right now, Florida State has two five-star DBs, one that's an absolute just – I don't really know what to call him, but a freakish person, um, like a Jalen Ramsey on roids, and then you've got Sean McCall, who is a very, very, very phenomenal product. So, And and um, just, just remember where Travis Hunter is originally from, the 561, Palm Beach County. It's the 561. Five six one. I'm claiming the all three. I'm claiming the three hundred five, the nine five four, five six one. We're claiming all three. The dynasty of of, of high school recruiting down here. Did y'all go to Georgia? But I'm just saying. I was gonna. We didn't talk about it in the production meeting, Mark. But uh, speaking of this, because we had a lot of Gators in here for some reason this evening. Yeah. Um. Did I miss the production meeting again? Yeah, you did. <laughs> It was uh, J. It's Jason. It's yeah. uh, the production meeting happens in the DMs throughout the week, and whatever Jason has brought up. Jason, Jason has to produce. I mean, obviously, <laughs> you know, someone has to carry the load here, so that's my job. So, um, but Dan Mullen, our our friend Dan Mullen down there in Gainesville, uh, uh -huh. just doesn't seem like he knows what's going on over here. So he tweeted a. Gra or he didn't tweet, he DM'd a graphic to Terrence Brooks, former 2013 national yeah. champion, now NFL veteran. Uh, he, he DM'd Terrence Brooks, the wrong Terrence, and DM'd him, DM'd him a UF graphic. Okay. I wish I could share my screen here. Oh, I can. Hold can up. You? Yep. Let's see. You Good know, deck. because I'm pretty sure Terrence Brooks doesn't have any more eligibility left. I think no. And I think it's sharing. Yep. Yeah, and so sharing. this right here. I don't know what else could be around here, but this uh, tweet, uh, he he DM'd him this graphic, if you can I see it. I don't know if your website is TVPG right now. That's all uh, I, I don't know what could be happening on there. But, yeah, this is what uh, Dan Mullen DM'd him with. Terrence Brooks, wrong name. DM'd Terrence Brooks, and he replied, 
with the weak ass UF hashtag null gang. They're just a real Terrence. You know, what, you know what? A a a for effort from yep. from Dan Mullen, and that's a D for for execution though. You, you, you can't. That yeah, and just out of eligibility. I mean, I don't know if Terrence. Yeah. But, We'll we'll try to confirm with Terrence. I'll try to ask him later on, but I think he's fully out of, out of eligibility and like kind of holding a holding your mascot's head like that with an FSU helmet on the top. I don't think that's really going to do well for you in Gainesville. No. I don't think that's what he wants. I don't think. But Dan will get a chance to see that this year because, as we said a couple of weeks ago, as I guaranteed the first hot take of the year, Florida State is going to be Florida this year. So stay tuned, though. Stick around for the second half hour of the show because I'm going to give you. Another hot take, just for free, just for Logan. The oh, next another hot take. Another hot take. There's never, there's never enough. Never, ever. never, never. There's never enough. How to get to the hot takes? Well, is there anything else we need to hit uh, Nate up on? I think we, I think Nate is just destroyed. He's did more on one show of recruiting than Logan's done in the last hundred and eleven. So I mean, yeah, exactly. Well, that's why I kept on. Cry- I'm crying for help, and that's why. Nate, bring the man on that knows what he's talking about. Bring him on. He's, he's able to jump on here and even on vacation. This is vacation yep. week. He's he's able to hop on Showtime. You know Nate, that? I'm going to make you work uh, for another minute here. I got one more for you. Uh-oh. So basically, uh, recruiting in South Florida compared to Ohio. No, never mind. <laughs> That's not what it was. Um, no. So basically, as you look from position to position and you look at uh, – you know, who the targets are. There are obviously positions for Florida State where if you don't get your number one guy, you go to the second guy and he's just as good. The third guy may even be right in that area. Fourth guy possibly versus some other positions where if you don't get that number one guy, there's a big gap there. There's a void. Like who are those guys that are more of the must gets? For... Florida State, I would I would say you're looking at Marvin Jones Jr. Um, at defensive end. While Florida State's done a great job at over the last uh, two some, you include this year and uh, last cycle addressing that need. Um, number one, uh, number two, I will put Evan Coleman with the um, issues with Destin Hill. You don't know what's going to happen with that. Um, you know, maybe the most electric playmaker in the country. Um, and then I hesitate putting Julian Armella. I would put him as three. But Florida State's done a great job recruiting offensive line. Their their offensive line board is phenomenal. You have like Elijah Pritchett that just took an official visit that Florida State feels great on out of Georgia. And then you look at guys that they have possibly committing in a Kishan Sapp and a Dolce Richardson, and, and and you look at that. So I think that, Ma. like you just said, you know those guys aren't far apart. That yes, and I was going to mention a Lou Ball who could play tackle and guard. So you know I would say your top three are are, 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 are those three. I think they addressed quarterback with AJ Duffy. I think you know running back. You know I don't think there's a, an elite running back in this class this year. Uh, and, and frankly, you know, Coach Laval runs a running back by committee. Um, you have Jaleel Skinner, the number one tight end, who Florida State feels great at. But I think right now there's three who I'll put as Muskets, and that's Jones, Coleman, and, and Armella right right at this moment. Bonus question here. Uh, we've got John on the line asking about, uh, did you hit on Katron Allen? Um. I think Florida State's got a lot of work to do with with, with Allen. Um, but one thing I wanted to mention here, he goes to IMG, um, you know, talking to a couple coaches from IMG. Um, you know, Florida State's really pushing that school really hard again. Uh, you look at just the, the short talent. Uh, Florida State's doing a really great job there. And you look at a kid like Dylan Everett, who no one's really talking about, who Florida State is sitting in a really good position. He takes an, uh, an official visit towards the end of the month. Um, he's a five-star defensive back. Florida State is considered in the top two or three. Uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, he's looking more at Florida. I would say he's more of a Florida guy at this moment, but they got him on campus today. Uh, Word is, you know, talking to uh, 
one of the coaches at IMG about two hours ago is that he liked to visit a lot, but uh, that recruitment's a far far away away. So they say it's doing work in G. Um, they've done a great job, you know, getting back in there because uh, you know this last coaching staff while they hosted the practices there, they did poor. Um, but some more work with uh, Fat Allen there. Nate, thank you so much for joining us this week and uh, officially supplanting uh, Logan as our recruiting director here at the Voice of College Football, Florida State. We need Nate to stick around. Nate, stick around for one second, buddy, because yeah. there's no tradition we do. Oh, I think he's staying. I think Nate's oh, always here to Nate, stay. There. Stick around, Nate, if you'd yeah. like. Because Nate's got to be here. For this I'm, 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 I'm here to stay. Okay, perfect, because there's a tradition we do here. We've reached that halfway point of our show here, and every single time – we, we get to this halfway point, somebody tells you why you need to hit the like button. And that somebody is not me. It's not Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. It's not our new recruiting insider, Nate Greer. It's the man, the myth, the Discord legend, no. Logan Robinson. Oh, Discord legend. I will take that Discord legend. We got, we got some more work to do. We're at 50 likes. Fif no, yeah, we're at 50. That's actually phenomenal. Usually it's yeah. at like 25 or 30, but right now we're jumping. Like, we, like I always say, if you hit that like button, it goes to more FSU fans. We've been doing this for 111 weeks in a row. It's absolutely wow. insane. It's it's starting. Well, Jason's been off and on a lot this summer. Yeah, um, I missed five. But, missed what fifty? There we go. Okay, uh, it, it's okay. We'll we'll allow it. But yeah, hit that like button. Share with your friends. Uh, we would definitely appreciate it because we want to get as many of the FSU fan base as we can before we head into the season because the numbers start rolling and we're starting to answer a little bit more questions as things are a little bit more quiet right now but you know things are starting to warm up there there's photo shoots going on right now jason they had photo shoots with the Ooh. players different jersey numbers things are happening so we're kind of get creeping into where you know the the media and they're trying to get their pictures for their magazines coming out soon yep exactly just like that so we're, we're starting to we're starting to get into that and it's definitely hot enough it's definitely hot enough for fall camp but I got a little ways to go, but 75 likes. We, we shotgun a beer. It hasn't happened yet. We've gotten to 74 the last two weeks. I think it's going to happen tonight, though. Get Logan drunk, fans. Hit the like button. That's what we oh, got. Oh, please. Get Logan drunk. Like, he really needs See, to. See, I, I don't even do that on Hear the Spear, Nate. I, I kind of keep it more. I'm more, prof uh, I'm more professional. Are you, are you shotgun a seltzer? Or? No, 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 no. It's okay. that Chick fil A influence. Yes. Yeah. I think, I think I've got some goodies in there. By the way, shout out to Popeyes. They're opening a Popeyes literally less than two miles from my house. So this is going to be a problem. Jason, I hope you're ready because I think it, the time has come for your hot takes. No, I, the hot takes wait. We were really oh, the hot it. takes are going to wait. The hot takes are going to be towards the end. We got Jason's it. producing the show. Yeah, we <laughs> Look, both, both, both Mark and I have production experience, so we're going to wait. we got to give the fans something, but I will give you a teaser. Three fan bases will be pissed with this hot take. We're taking out three fan bases at one time with this hot take. So stay tuned for that one. We do have a super chat that came in last week that we said that we would honor. And we want to make sure that we do that because we were running out of time. We had uh, gone past and uh, we appreciate. Uh, this came in from, do we know? I think it was from Khalil, correct? It was. It was yep, from yep. Yes. So, yep. Khalil, we hope you're watching because we appreciate the uh, Super Chat contribution. And also this week from Phil B. and Ronan, you guys, uh, again, Ronan with his infamous 1378 contribution. Uh, but uh, so we've got one must win for Florida State. We've got one we can't lose. Mm -hmm. One team we haven't played or haven't in a while that uh, everyone or you answering the question would like to see them play in a bowl game. So let's start with the first question. What's a must win for Florida State this year? Of course, you can take that a number of different ways, Jason. It's Wake Forest. It, the Wake Forest game is going to be the, the most important. It's the must win at this point, and I'm going to tell you why. The first two games of the season, we pretty much know what's going to happen. We know we're going to lose to Notre Dame. We know we're going to beat Jacksonville State. I think it's I think it's almost it's almost guaranteed that we will start off the season one and one. Wake Forest is a team that it's they're they're a good team. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to defame Wake Forest in any way. But they're a team that right now, on paper, Florida State should beat Wake Forest. If Florida State wins that game, it's winning the game she's supposed to, to win, and that's something Florida State hasn't done the last four seasons. That's been one of the biggest problems Florida State has had the last four seasons. It also sets up to where that confidence for that Louisville game. 
for that Syracuse game so that you're four and one, possibly going into that, possibly going into that North Carolina game four and one, and maybe having some momentum of being able to beat North Carolina. If you lose to Wake Forest, you see how much in trouble we are because then you're playing a Louisville team that you lost to by 32 points last year. You're playing a Syracuse team you haven't played since 2019 before going into that North Carolina game. To me, that Wake Forest game is the difference between possibly going in 4-1 and one against North Carolina or possibly even being as bad as 1-4. and four. So I think the must-win game right now is Wake Forest at this point. What do you think, Nate? Nate's Nate. either frozen or thinking Nate's long and hard Nate. about this one. We'll go to Logan. <laughs> we'll go to Logan. Nate's got to dial up, so we'll go to Logan. Logan, what is Oh, uh, you might be you might be muted, Nate. Yeah, that's what Nate. it is. There we go. Nate, Nate, give us your must win right now. Uh my must win, I, I agree with your point because I, I think it's very true. Momentum is is very big for this, but I gotta go, I gotta go Miami. And the reason why I go Miami is because of, of just the past few years with everything at the coaches' convention, with the way they looked last year, with the in-state battle. I don't think Florida took advantage of either team being down. Uh, Miami uh, had some good pub after last year in a, in a decent recruiting class. I think you have to beat Miami just in order to keep nailing home that 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 direction that you know you're getting back along so i think you have to beat miami I, i'm right there with you and you know you have that one point about miami i'm gonna go the recruiting route too for guys you know down there in the south you're trying to keep trying to break that whole kind of fence i don't think there's really a fence anymore after what jimbo did to him but you know trying to create that attraction from coming up to fsu bringing that back because you know you've got playmakers like travis hunter coming that is already making waves all over social media but you know, to beat Miami like that and for what it will do for guys that are down south, definitely like a Julian Armella that's there, Marvin Jones Jr., just letting them know that, hey, you know, things, we're, we're getting back to how it used to be where, you know, you're, you're just beating the shit out of uh, Miami oh. on a regular basis. I get to say one. I get to say oh. one, right? One. You get one, Logan. You're I, get, I get one. I get one. But it's it's perfect because we got a few Miami. We got a few Miami people over here. The, the class, classy outfit here at uh, the Voice of College Football, but we don't want to be too too ridiculously <laughs> I, I, stringent. I, I hope we beat Miami, but I, I just speculate that we're going to have to wait until 2022 for that one. I'm right there with Jason because as I look at it, we've talked about the five almost certain losses, mm -hmm. and then the three you would have to figure are give me wins, Jacksonville State, UMass, and Syracuse. So the fragile psyche of this football team needs a win against a team that's comparable to them. And so that's on the road at Wake Forest. Then they come home and they're at home, yes, against Louisville. So one of those two games, but Wake Forest being the first of the two, I'm right there with Jason with the Wake Forest. But from a from a going beyond beyond the field aspect, then Nate and Logan have the good point of the Miami game means more. I think the Wake Forest, yes, I, I will agree with both Nate and Logan 100%. The Miami game does mean more not just for the recruiting, but also for the Florida State fans. There's a lot of us down here, a lot of fans and alumni of us down here in South Florida. Uh, the Wake Forest game is also important because it's the only road game in the first five of the season. It's two at home, Wake Forest, two at home. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important for us to get that road. We, we need to have teams afraid that Florida State is going to come into your house, kick your butt, take your women, and come back home. That's what we need to make these teams afraid of. And right now, there aren't a lot of teams that are afraid of us. I, I, if you look at our schedule – Based on what we've done the last four seasons, are you afraid of Florida State? I don't. I don't blame you if you're not. So that's why we need to get that fear back into dominating the ACC like we used to when we first came in. So, Khalil, this second question is actually a same version of the first question <laughs> to a certain extent. Well, Basically, he's asked, "What's the must-win, or what's the we can't lose?" I. I I, I don't know. I think we can't lose would arguably be, like you said, the three guaranteed wins. I'd say probably you'd say either UMass, Jacksonville State, or or Syracuse. Because I and it could be. Let's let's just be realistic. The worst case scenario is Florida State loses to Wake Forest, loses to Louisville, and comes in that Syracuse game limping in at one and three. And we don't know because we did not see Syracuse last year. We don't know if Syracuse is going to be a decent team or if they're going to be hot garbage. So Syracuse could come in, 
to Tallahassee on October 2nd and win the game. I agree with you. I think they're going to be more in the hot garbage area, but you never know. At this point, you don't know because we didn't see them. Three and nine. Uh, the, the, the we can't lose, I would probably argue more Louisville, mostly because of what Louisville did to us last year. I know Tutu Atwell is not with them anymore. I know that a lot of those guys who, who kicked our butt last year aren't on that team. But, but the fact is that we went up to Louisville and lost them by 32 points when they had one win. One friggin' win, and that's the team that kicked our butt. That's where you knew the season was in trouble at that point. So I think the, the Louisville game to me, I know it's early. You can say I'm copping out by saying it's back-to-back, but I think, I think Louisville is the game that you cannot lose at this point. So The game you can't I, lose, I Logan. I want to answer that question. With the end. Go ahead, Nate. Go ahead, Logan. Well, uh, I want to answer that question without kind of answering that question because I think this team needs to – when you look at what Florida State has seen in the last few years is they've gotten flat and out dominated against any team with a pulse. So I don't think you necessarily need to not lose to a team. I think against Notre Dame, Clemson, Florida State, Miami, North Carolina, you have to win one or two of those games, but you have to look competitive in all five of those games. I think you can't go out and egg and just get all absolutely five? destroyed anymore in order to get back to all five FSU. You, you think they're going to be competitive in all five? Clemson. They need to be competitive? I, I, really? I, I think here's a successful yes. season for me for Florida yes, State. Florida five. State, I, I think you would agree, Nate, they've got by far the toughest schedule in the ACC. It's not even close, unfortunately. They've got to deal with Florida and yes. Notre Dame on a conference. They play in the tougher of the two divisions. Plus, they get the two best teams in the other division, North Carolina and Miami. So I would like to see them pull off one upset against the five that they're going to be an underdog against and then play competitive in, let's say, three to four mm-hmm. of the other games. I, I just I would be shocked. I would think it would be a great accomplishment if they go seven and five mm-hmm. and they play competitively against all five of those teams? Like we're talking about one one mm-hmm. score well, to two score games? That's a lot mm-hmm. to ask based I think on what we that, saw last year. I, I think that – yeah, but last year, you know, a lot, lot, lot of factors went in last year. COVID, no spring, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Florida State's addressed some of those issues at defensive end offensive linemen to help shore that up a little bit. I think but that when they was the last uh, had their best quarterback they they had against... with, with Melton. I'm sorry, Nate. When was the last time they, they were competitive against everybody in the schedule? 2014? 2016, maybe? 2017? Maybe? 2016, no. probably? No, yeah. we got killed by Louisville that But for, for me, so... I, I have a little bit different variation of competitive. They can't lose by to club and look like crap. They can't go to Miami and lose fifty-two to ten. They can't quit against Florida. Um, I think you know Carolina. They beat last year. I think that's going to be a tough game. The competitive is fourteen twenty points, and, and, and they fight the whole time. Okay. I, I think where you're getting at seven points. I don't think Florida State's there yet. I don't think they have them. In- I think we're in the same yet. realm. When it- I don't think they have enough depth there. I don't think they have enough um, pieces to. Yeah, I don't think they have Norvell needs yet. I don't think we're there of being within ten points of Clemson. I think huh? that they can be twenty-one points within Clemson. Yeah, I, I think we're in the same realm when it comes to being competitive. I'm not talking about taking them down to a last-second field goal. I'm talking about getting into the third quarter, being within range, and then maybe you get dusted in the last 10 minutes. Maybe it's a 10-point game with 10 minutes left, yep. and then all of a sudden Clemson scores a couple more touchdowns and wins by 24. That's still showing that for like 45 to yep. 50 minutes of the game that you were playing with them. Yeah, I'm with you. That's I'm with what you. I'm so talking about. So, so then our final question was Wait, Logan. Logan didn't give us his. Oh, we miss Logan. Basically, who they can't <laughs> lose to. Who you can't lose to. Uh, these kind of questions always get me good. Uh, you can't lose to Jacksonville State. 
That'll be quick and easy. Then now we move on to the next one. All right. So, so then the final of the trifecta, the final of the trifecta is who would you like to see Florida state Jason play in a bowl game that they haven't played in a long time or ever? Well, Athlons has us going to the holiday bowl playing Washington. We talked about that earlier. I would love to go to San Diego. I'd love Washington is is a team we've never played before. I wouldn't mind playing them. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we, we've talked about this before. I Texas, I am crazy. Thank you, baby. Low, appreciate it. Um, I, I, Texas is a team we've never played before. I wouldn't mind playing Texas because I think Texas is an overrated team. Um, we haven't played Penn State since the Orange Bowl in 2005 to end the 2005 season. I wouldn't mind playing them uh, once in a while. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, schools like that, I, th I feel like we've played a couple teams once in a while, like Wisconsin, we played them in a bowl game uh, in the Champ Sports Bowl. You know, that might be an interesting team to play. But probably now, just, just for argument's sake, I'd say either Washington or Texas would probably be the two I wouldn't mind playing that we have never played before. Hmm, this is one that haven't played man i have to do my history on this one uh i was gonna say texas too because that was my second favorite team when i was growing up playing uh ea sports in the caa mine is lsu yeah yeah so and plus florida state plays lsu to start off the season next year in um new orleans so that one's you know already set up so i was gonna say lsu too but probably texas for me i'd like to i would love to go to a game um, and if it's in, if it's ever going to be in uh, San Diego too, sign me up. You know, Cali vibes. I like it over there. All right, from Southern Cal, we haven't played them since '98. Or USC, USC, USC. I played the, I played with the USC quite a bit too on EA Sports. So Logan's expert analysis is on top video games. Got it. Yep, yep. Nate, please salvage the Noel Game Day family. Who, who you got? <laughs> um, Texas A and M. Oh God! Mm. <laughs> oh yes, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. I would no. love to play Texas A and M again. Um, um, you know, I, you know, gr you know, when I was you know a teenager, they played them a few times, and then it's a different, it's a different team. You know that. You know, I thought about them, but you know, I Logan made my point with LSU is on the schedule. Georgia's on the mm -hmm. schedule coming up. But a team like Texas A&M, Florida State has not played them in a long time. And, and, and just the stories would write themselves. Here's a question that I would like to pass along to Jason and all of you, but Jason first, because it was asked in the live chat, and if it's well with uh, Nate's response, what do you think would have happened had Jimbo Fisher stayed at Florida State? I don't think Florida State has four straight disappointing seasons. I think we've talked about this before. I think you could see the start mm -hmm. in 2015, start 2016, like it's starting to go in that direction. I think probably if he sticks around and doesn't quit on the team around the 2017 season and doesn't officially abandon ship like a true, like a true scumbag and leave before the race <laughs> against Louisiana Monroe, I think – Probably in 2018, we're probably an eight and four, seven and five team. I, th I think we have winning seasons, but I think we you see a downhill slide. Really? Yes. The guy's <laughs> too good a recruiter. Had he been invested wow. just like he was earlier, they would be fine. <laughs> Clemson's, Clemson's a high standard based on what they've accomplished. Because, so I don't know if he would have yeah, kept up with Clemson. Because, I don't yeah, know yeah, that. Right, but they, were, they would be finishing in the top 15 in the nation. If Jimbo right. Fisher, you were right. Because that's he what he's out, doing at Texas A&M. He was out there recruiting everyone in the, in the can, 2000, can, uh, 2010 recruiting class, 2011. Oh, no, wait. He wasn't. Those were guys like Mark Stoops. DJ Elliott, those were these assistants that were going out there and recruiting. When Jimbo had to start doing more of the recruiting, you see the downhill slide. It's a fact, Mark. We've talked about it. I said we'd have a winning record. I get that you guys all think Jimbo's the greatest coach Ooh. ever. I don't think he's the greatest coach ever, but he knows what the hell he's doing, and he's gone to Texas A&M, and their recruiting is shot can, through the roof. And what is their and, – and can, 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 I, can, I can I say something? Absolutely, Nate. Can, can Back I say, me up on this one. <laughs> okay, so, 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 let me ask you one question. A part of your question: that that does Andy Miller and Jimbo get along after? No. So that that plays a role. So so if if Andy Miller and Jimbo cannot have their 
off the field issues, I think Florida State turns it back around. Um, Because, you know, I think Florida State, if they get the stuff that Jimbo wanted, you know, we can talk about that. But I am in a little bit of an agreement with Jason that the, 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 the seeds have been planted in 2014 with a lack of accountability, recruiting misses, and that wasn't Jimbo. Jimbo, I disagree with Jason that when when Jimbo took over, that was Jimbo, that was Coach Coley, that was Damian Craig. Jimbo's a hell of a recruiter. What did him in was trusting Tim Brewster. What did him in was, was trust, trusting Tim Brewster to take over the recruiting to head that, spear that, and then for this guy to think he's going to land everyone and then, then not to have plan Bs. Okay, they didn't have plan B's when, when it was Coach Brewster because he thought they were getting everyone, and, and, and that's what that's when you saw the recruiting misses that does land on Jimbo a little bit. I think Jimbo is an elite recruiter, I think Jimbo is amongst the top three or four coaches in the country as a recruiter. But in terms of Florida State, where they would be, I do think that they would have struggled for a little bit because they did a poor job on some evaluations and development and they had some stuff with the off field stuff going on. We all know about it. I do think though that Florida State would have gotten back. I don't think they slide four years in a row. I think Jimbo, a dialed in Jimbo is one of the top five coaches in the country, in my I, opinion. I, I but I do agree. I do agree it's a piece of crap for how he ended it. Right. And I do think the recruiting aspect to kind of say it, my beef with it is that I think the problem Jimbo did and, and I'll say this about Bobby Bowden. Bobby Bowden, this is one of his weaknesses when he came in the recruiting towards the 2000 era. We talked about this earlier. The best recruiting is in the state of Florida. You recruit South Florida. You recruit Orlando. You recruit Tampa. You recruit Jacksonville. If you get the state of Florida, you don't have to worry about, about the rest of the country as much. Jimbo, starting with the 2014 class, the 2015 class, started to move away from recruiting South Florida. He started to move away from recruiting a lot of the areas in the state of Florida and went for guys that were a little bit more national. That's where you start to see the downfall, and that's where you start to see other schools come in. You start to see Alabama. I'm not, I'm not comparing Florida State to Alabama. Alabama is in a different class right now, but Alabama came into South Florida and got guys that in the past, Jerry Judy was a guy who was choosing between Alabama and Florida State. In the past, Jerry Judy would have probably gone to Florida State at that point, and he's going off to Alabama. You've got Alabama coming in and getting guys from schools that used to just be pipelines to Florida State in both the 90s and the early 2000s and even the early 2010s with Jimbo was here. So, you know, Jimbo is a, is a very good coach. I will 100% give him credit as a very good coach. I think that that you start to see it. You started to see it losing those games, losing that Georgia Tech game. I, it wasn't just the fact that we lost to Georgia Tech in 2015 on a blocked field goal return for a touchdown. There's no reason that that game should have come down to that point. There's no reason we should have lost half those games in both in 2015, 2016, 2017 that we did. I get that you had injuries. I get that you had other things. But there's no reason the floor State should have been in that conversation where we're losing to NC State in 2017 when we're losing we're getting blown out by 32 points to boston college in 2017 there's no reason for any of these things to be happening so that's why i'm saying i don't think we are back to that 29 game winning streak in 2012 2013 2014 but i think we're better than we were that's why i said i think eight and four is probably where we're at at that point <clears throat> and florida state too at that time you know, if, if Texas A&M doesn't go in there and kind of distract Jimbo a little bit, and I mean, offering that kind of money, I mean, I, you're just not going to turn that down. You get to go have the capabilities of going to the SEC, including with having uh, that SEC money for his facilities, which, you know, was a big thing. But there was a lot of, you know, disagreements going on inside of the program more than anything. But, you know, Jimbo was kind of back on his wave again of recruiting insane amount of talent. I mean, looking at that 2017 class, Cam Akers, Marvin Wilson, you also got Kane Doe, Kane LeBourne, um, looking at Hamza Nazaldine too, um, Tamara and Terry, uh, and then obviously before it, you had Landon Dickerson in the 2016 class, Brian Burns, Malik Henry was coming in. Like, you know, Jimbo was back in his bag. I mean, he was 
ready to roll and, you know, everything was going to set off, but uh, it kind of, you know, fell off and that, that's what happens. But I, I, it just, it stinks the way that goes down. All right. We're going to end this on a high that's, note. Step away that, for that, a second. Uh, uh, one more thing. One more thing. Ahead, one thing. The, 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 off, the reason for the decline for a few years was what, you know, Jason just, not Jason, but Logan just mentioned his name. A guy like Malik Henry, Florida State did a poor job recruiting quarterback. And they had so many issues yeah. at recruiting the most important position in college football. And, and that's why I think you, you see a fall off. Well, I think it's also, too, though, you weren't expecting to have what happened. I mean, you're looking at you had a gigantic class of quarterbacks because you're about to have Malik Henry. You're going to have DeAndre Francois. You're going to have DeAndre uh, Johnson, too. And like those three were going to be on your team at the same time. And then what happens? Blake Henry falls off. He ends up being a, uh, a complete, you know, a letdown inside the program and isn't good with teammates, isn't good that he traveled far away from home. And then obviously we know what happened uh, with DeAndre Johnson and then DeAndre Francois. So, you know, not only maybe it was just bad recruiting on who you were getting, but, you know, so there were some bad things that went on with that. You also had Bailey Hawkman coming in into the 2017 class too. Oh, James hey, Blackman. Hey, don't insult left-handed people. Okay. Be good to lefties. Don't <laughs> left people. It, it was a, it was a complete, but that whole time right there, that time period is oh. tough. You know, you lose two of those guys. I mean, Malik Henry was supposed to be the next, you know, that next Jameis S quarterback at FSU. And that falls apart. And then you're like, okay, well, I still have Johnson or I still have Francois and Francois is still a very talented guy, but you know, there was so many things that was going on, you know, you know, inside the locker room and, you know, off the field that became a distraction for him and his growing as a player um, that stuck, that sucked. All right, we're going to end this on a high note, though. We're going to end this on a high note with the best hot take. We're going to start doing this. We've got 10 more weeks that I'm with you guys until the start of the season. So we are going to give you the 10 hot takes. I already gave you one hot take. I think Florida State beats Florida. So are you ready, Logan? Are you ready I want your responses to this. I'll tell you if you're crazy or not. Well, I'm crazy. Well, no, I'm crazy. But that's yeah. Good. All right. Confirm yeah. it. All right, here you go. So the SEC and the ACC – Open the season with three games against each other. Miami against Alabama, Louisville against Ole Miss, and Clemson against Georgia. Are you ready? Oh, God. Hot take number one. The ACC loses all three of them. I think Georgia upsets Clemson. I think Alabama beats Miami, and I think Ole Miss beats Louisville. I don't think that's a hot take. I think that's a like I think that's a take. I don't think it's a hot one. Clemson Clemson losing to Georgia. I think Clemson. You know, and I don't think it's going to be a blowout loss by any stretch of the imagination. But I think, I think DJ. I'm not even going to try to to butcher his last name. I apologize. But I think not just him. But I think Clemson loses a lot of guys off last year's team. I think the way Ohio State beat the hell out of them in the Sugar Bowl last year. Shout out to Mark Robinson for that. Mark Rogers for that one. Excuse me. Shout yeah. out to right there. But I just think that Clemson right now is is taking a slight step back. I think Clemson will be fine the way the rest of the season goes. But I think. The SEC goes three and zero against the ACC in the opening weekend. Uh oh, Mark, you're muted. So I just caught the tail end of that. So that's Ole Miss beats Louisville, uh, Alabama beats Miami, and the Georgia, third game is Georgia, Georgia beats Clemson. Correct. And then I heard Logan come back with "That's a take." I, he doesn't think it's a hot take. I will second that. That's a <laughs> take. <laughs> what are we predicting here? Did we predict like a 25-point uh, upset or something here? I, I'm, I'm missing it. <laughs> to Georgia. I think that's a very hot take because I think Georgia has been a team. Georgia has been a team that has, has constantly – disappointed has been able to get to the five yard line and fumbled for about the last decade. That game's going to be practically a pick em game. Not really. I think Clemson's going to come in as a favorite I, as a comfortable favorite. What? And I no, think Georgia, no. wins. Georgia wins by at least be a comfortable favorite. <laughs> they'll be a two point favorite. No, they'll, they'll be easily a five point favorite. No, 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 no. <laughs> and I think it's not going to be a five point favorite against I, Georgia. I, I don't trust Kirby Smart. Really? I, I, I don't trust Kirby Smart. I don't trust Kirby Smart in big games. See, Georgia underestimate. I, I, think, I do I agree think, with you. Uh, I, I do agree. Oh and three. Oh and three. I, 
I agree. I although I I, I don't think I. For Kirby Smart, I think this is a good thing and starting off the first game of the season like this. I think throughout the season, there's a there's smarter coaches, so they know how to figure out Kirby Smart. The fact that they're starting off the season in a game, I think that the advantage goes to Kirby Smart um, because I just think Dabo, once the season's rolling, he just gets better and he gets smarter. But two, I mean, they have a quarterback now. JT Daniels, he he, he I think he's going to be just fine heading to year two there. I don't know why they didn't start him earlier last year, but uh, he's going to light it up. Uh, I think this upcoming season for Georgia, they've needed a quarterback that they can rely on. The last couple of years, the last couple of guys they've had has, has been about as bad as what Florida State has kind of been going through. Um, but I, I do think Georgia, there's a very good chance this win. But I don't think it's a hot take. It's definitely a take. But okay. I, I guess I'm going to have to. It's I'm going to have to. Cold. I'm, I'm going to use. I'm going to use one of Jason's favorite terms, and I'm going to say I'm going to trump his hot take here. With, oh. With with, 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 a, with a take here that plays off of this game because I've got. I've already posted an early game preview on Clemson and Georgia. That thank you everybody out there. This got like seventeen thousand views. And I have not made a prediction on the game because I won't until the the, the week uh, of the game. But I did, after the national championship game, in my way too early top 25, name Georgia as my number one team. Oh, wow. So you really think there's a hot take. That's a hot, that's a hot take. Now, I'm not saying that they're my preseason number one all the way through August. But as we stand right now, then, of course, they lost their best wide receiver right after I made that take. Yeah. Now, I'm not here next week, but on the 30th, on June 30th, the next hot take is going to be something about why Florida State will do something they haven't done in over five years. Mm. Stay tuned on the 30th. I'm going to – I won't be sleeping that night before I'll tell you that one, Mark. I won't be. You won't be. I won't be sleeping. I'll be thinking about it the whole time. That's but good. just a uh, minus 3.5 for uh, Clemson right now. That's more than two. So is that is that hot? That it's can't not be hot. five, That's, but it's it's a hot take. Good. I think it's got to be a touchdown, right? Like right. a touchdown, seven points. I said five. I I'm not going to consider that uh, an an upset. <laughs> to me, that's that's just it's that's a good. it's a game between two ultra talented teams. That is the game that I believe will have more talent on the field than any regular season game in college football you've been a hater on everything i've done now for 111 weeks so why stop you make well, it easy the tradition <laughs> <laughs> have the hate in your heart mark have the hate in your heart. what about hey thank you for joining us this week you want to come back next week take take the spot <laughs> make it a normal game day takeover next week Maybe so. What about Stacy? There was a question on here. Stacy, welcome. We haven't really touched yes. on him. Maybe we could do that real quickly. We should. Where the overtime portion here? So, so I'll set us up here, Logan. Go ahead. Uh, I, I posted a video on our Oklahoma channel. Another shameless plug there. Oklahoma Sooners hey. channel uh, with our Friday live show, Oklahoma Live at uh, two thirty Eastern. But uh, yeah, Stacy Wilkins was the fifteenth rated offensive tackle coming out of high school two years ago. Uh, redshirted. As a freshman, of course, in 2019, opted out halfway through 2020, played four games, a lot of snaps, but mostly garbage minutes for Oklahoma, but got on the field, got some reps, and again, was a top 15 tackle, top 200 player, uh, number three ranked player in the state of Arkansas, and he has entered the transfer portal. Yeah, so this is one that we'll definitely talk about tomorrow night as, as Stacey Wilkins, obviously, Florida State, loses on Kane Madden here to Notre Dame, but the relationship, I think, is a bigger favor here for Mike Norvell because during his recruitment for Wilkins, Mike Norvell, while he was at Memphis, uh, was in contact and recruiting-wise with Wilkins. So I think there's an advantage there for FSU. It seems like FSU is also going to have the first visit for Wilkins as he just recently, most uh, most recently, put his name into the portal. Some teams to look out for, obviously, Arkansas is one. Uh, some other names like South Carolina, Oregon, Indiana, Baylor, uh, maybe even Rutgers too. But keeping an eye out for uh, mainly Arkansas in this one. Hopefully, you know, you see Florida State and Coach Atkins, Mike Norvell, they can use that advantage. Definitely Mike with having, you know, that relationship of recruiting ahead of that. You know, that might come to an advantage. You would get immediate, you know, maybe not immediate, but you would get playing time. There's, the thing is, though, we just haven't seen him play. Uh, as much and you know he was like like uh Nate had said uh he came in as a top 15 offensive tackle um in his class too um 
a top top 200 player, you know, he would definitely play. It's just depending if Mike Norvell can seal this up. And, you know, Florida State is rearranging this whole offensive line. I think when we get the fall camp, a lot of things are going to be different than what we predict. You know, we keep on trying to predict what this lineup is going to be at. But I think it's going to be all over the place once we get into fall camp. I think there's going to be some different guys moved to different places. Devontae Love Taylor can play in a lot in a wide range of areas. Um, so, and you still got Dante Lucas, you know, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, anybody else want to talk on Wilkins? I think yeah. uh, Florida State's heavily going to try to send it again on him, though. If he goes to Arkansas, are you going to completely flip your script on him and say you never wanted him? Absolutely. So you're never got it. Okay, cool. Never had any interest. That would be sucky if Florida State were to get him. All right, cool. There you have it. Another Florida State Live in the books. Number 111. Jason is going to let us down. He's batting about 500 in recent weeks. Uh, he's not going to be here next week. I probably shouldn't have announced that. That's not good for the show. But, you could, but uh, Let's just get real quick. I'm going to do it here. Shout out to my father. He, he turns 72 next week. Happy birthday, Dad. A Florida State alumni. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday, Dad. Happy birthday, uh, Pops Parker. No, Mr. Yeah. Parker. There you go. Show Mr. PP. Mr. Pops Parker. PP. No, that, no, that, no. <laughs> so immature. <laughs> so, yes. Jason, Logan, Nate, and myself. Nate, thank you so much for joining us for the uh, recruiting uh, rundown. Very valuable. But uh, Florida State Live 112 will be next Wednesday, hopefully at 6 o'clock Eastern. But uh, we've got to organize schedules, so hit that like button and subscribe to hit the bell for the notifications to know when we're going live. But uh, appreciate everybody being here. Bring other people here, Florida State fans and otherwise, to talk college football here each and every week. All right, Jason, appreciate you. As always, we will miss you next week. Aww. Logan. Anything special going on at uh, Noel Game Day? Uh, same old, same old. Tomorrow we should be having two, if not one, most certain uh, commits of the 2024 class that I know that we have confirmed for the show tomorrow night. Right, Nate? You can probably say his name. Oh, I think it's muted. But are we? I'm, uh, I'm not muted. I'm not uh, muted. The, where are we having? Uh, Cam Davis. <gasps> Cam Davis, big boy, 2024 commit. Uh, shoot, we'll see if he sticks with FSU or if he goes to the MLB. But he looks like uh, he looks like a Leonard Fournette to me. But uh, so far, looking forward to having him on tomorrow night. And we might have another guy that's in a 2022 class. So got a lot of stuff going on, just mainly on Hear the Spear and try to get in that Discord. You got to join us, patreon.com slash day. Get in that Discord. Nate can back it up now, but get in there. Stuff is bumping right now. Recruiting is rolling, so we're back to normal, and it feels good. I won't miss not hearing that word next week. That's something I won't miss. I'll text you it. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate and and we can't do we him. can't now. We well, I do the we passed already the out one hour mark, so we can't do uh, the shotgun of the beer. We already passed. I know we hit seventy five likes. We did this like two weeks ago, but since we've already passed the seven o'clock, it's got to be from six to seven. I think you should give it to him. Give him to him something special. You know, you want to No, they've got to <laughs> earn it. I think it's, it's got to be from it. six to seven. It's got to be, be special. It's got to be earned within the well, restrictions. If it's six to, if it's six to seven, we never start on time. We always run on Miami center time. Well, so see, we started and about we're eight minutes, even after at seven fifteen. So, you yeah. know, I, I was even going to wait for us to be alive at least for an hour, but, you know, look at us. We're over here just struggling. And, you know, we'll get to 75. Three weeks in a row, though, we've gotten so close. It sucks. All right, folks. Uh, you get two more doses of me tonight. Uh, Oregon Ducks Live on our Oregon channel, 8 o'clock Eastern time. And then we'll do a big call-in show on the main channel at 9. Bring your call-in uh, questions and comments. Uh, everybody else, Florida State Live. We'll see you next week. Quack it with Mark. <laughs>